Hi everybody and welcome back for another exciting week of Espanol. This week here in Capítulo 3, titled Que Tiempo Hace? Uh, what's the weather like today? This week we're going to be learning about a variety of vocabulary words that are relevant to your real life. Uh, that does include weather and other things like seasons, clothing, colors, um, fun things of that nature. So upon successful completion of this chapter, you will be able to identify vocab related to weather and seasons. Express likes and dislikes using the verb gustar. Identify clothing items and colors. Communicate dates and times. And tell what you and others are going to do in the near future using the verb ir, to go, plus an infinitive. So as we get started, let's take a look at some of these seasons and some clothing items. So it asks you here, ¿Qué estación es? What season is it? Or, ¿Qué ropa llevas? What clothing do you wear? And you can see four uh, different boxes split up here. We'll start here in the right hand corner with la primavera, the spring. You can see uh, this woman here, she's wearing el suéter, a sweater, and also a blusa, a blouse. She has on a falda, a skirt, and some zapatos, shoes. She's also carrying a paraguas because, you know, it tends to llueve a lot in the primavera. She's uh, carrying an umbrella there because it tends to, to rain a lot in the spring. Over here you see el invierno, the winter, with Frosty here, and uh, as they're working on Frosty there, they're using guantes, gloves. They're also, um, they have, this guy's wearing a bufanda, and this young lady is putting her bufanda on the snowman. Um, they're both wearing abrigos, coats, and they both have botas, boots, as well. Finally, uh, this guy's wearing a gorro, a toboggan, or a, a beanie, some people call it. A winter hat, we'll say. Uh, over here in El Verano, uh, looks pretty nice there and sunny. Uh, you can see uh, this young lady has on some sandalias, some sandals. Um, he is wearing a traje de baño, a bathing suit, a suit of bathing literally, or a, a swimsuit we might say. Um, she is wearing pantalones cortos, cor uh, shorts or cut pants literally, and also a camiseta, a t-shirt, and a sombrero, a hat. Finally, the best season of all, we're here to fall and otoño, my favorite season. Uh, you can see here, uh, this guy's out walking his dog. He's wearing a chaqueta, a jacket, and some blue jeans. He also is wearing a cinturón, a belt, and a camisa, just a shirt, and some tenis, tennis shoes. So el otoño. So those are your seasons. Um, like I said, in this chapter, you get lots of vocabulary related to the weather, and we saw this up here. Hace sol, it's sunny. Hay muchas nubes, it's cloudy, está nublado. Um, hace calor, it's hot. Hace frío, it's cold. Llueve, it's raining. Nieva, it's snowing. Hay tormentas, there's storms. Um, so on and so forth. Um, we already talked about the clothing. You have some colors in this chapter as well. Amarillo, yellow. Uh, there's a city in Texas that is spelled this way, and I hear people say Amarillo all the time. Amarillo, amarillo is yellow in Spanish. Anaranjado is orange, azul, blue, blanco, white, café, brown. There's also another word for brown. Marrón also works for brown. Uh, gris, gray, morado, purple, negro, black, rojo, red, rosado, pink, and verde, green. Okay, so as we begin to practice here, it asks you, uh, ¿Qué tiempo hace? Uh, which season do you associate with the weather below? So nieva, it's snowing. I don't know about you, I generally think of snow and I think of the winter or el invierno. I want you to pause your audio, please, and give numbers two through five a try as you're thinking about which one here, um, which season this might be. Go ahead and pause. Okay, now that you're ready, let's take a look. Number two says, hace mucho calor. Man, it is really hot. But when it's really hot, I think about el verano, the summer. Number three says llueve, it's raining. When I think about the rain, I think about springtime because it tends to rain a lot in the spring. La primavera, la primavera. Uh, number four, hace mucho sol, it's very sunny. I put summer here, el verano. And hace mucho frío, it's very cold. I put the invierno here again as well, the winter. Okay, uh, let's practice with your colors a little bit too. It's going to give you um, an item and you need to tell what color the item is. So for example, in number one, we're talking about a falda. If you don't remember, a falda is a skirt. We can see here that the skirt is white. Uh, white in Spanish is blanco. But we need to make it agree, though, with la falda. So we're going to write a sentence that says, la falda es blanca. 
Blanca, because it's feminine singular, to agree with falda, which was also feminine singular. Uh, number two says los guantes, gloves. You can see some gloves over here. They're gray. So instead of saying the gloves is gray, we need to say the gloves are gray. Los guantes son, instead of es, son. Gris was gray. And then, of course, to make it plural, it ends in a consonant, so we need to add es. So los guantes son grises. Grises. Okay, I want you guys to try numbers three, four, and five for me, please. You can unpause when you're ready. Okay, number three, it says el suéter. We can see the, the suéter here is bright yellow. El suéter es amarillo. Amarillo. Number four, we're talking about las botas. You can see the botas down here. Uh, the boots are brown, so you could say las botas son cafés o son marrones. Either one for brown, café or marrón. And in this case, plural, to agree with botas, so cafés o marrones. Number five, la bufanda. It looks like that's pretty orange to me, so la bufanda es anaranjada. Or some people use the word naranja here as well. Naranja, in my mind, refers more to like an orange, like you're going to eat. Um, and anaranjada is more of the color, but I've heard both, so... La bufanda es anaranjada o la bufanda es naranja. Los dos son bien. Okay. Um, <clears throat> our first grammatical concept in this chapter relates to the verb gustar. Gustar means to like or literally to be pleasing to. I've conjugated it here for you in your magical box of Spanish. So we say a mí me gusta. I like. Or a ti te gusta. A él, ella, usted le gusta. So, I like, you like, he likes, or to or for me, it pleases, to or for you, it pleases, to or for him or her, it pleases. A nosotros nos gusta, to or for us, it pleases. A vosotros os gusta, and a ellos, a ellas, a ustedes, les gusta, to or for you all, it pleases. So, I like, you like, he or she likes, we like, you all like, and they like. Um... Some things to know about the verb gustar. We use gusta, G-U-S-T-A, with a singular noun. And that's something to, to notice here. We didn't conjugate it the way we do a normal AR verb. We didn't say gusto, gustas, gusta. Gustamos, gustais, and gustan. You always use either the third person singular, gusta, or the third person plural form, gustan, of this verb. Always. You will never use gusto, gustas, gustamos, or gustais. It's always gusta or gustan. That's why I tell you to think about to or for me, it pleases. To or for you, it pleases. If you translate it that way, it tends to help. So, um, we use gusta with singular nouns and with infinitives. So, for example, me gusta tu vestido. I like your dress. Well, there's only one dress there. It's singular, so I'm using gusta. Um, same thing here. Me gusta el verano. El verano, the summer, is a singular noun. It's singular. Um, it's masculine. We're going to use me gusta. On the flip side of that, we use gustan with plural nouns. So here, me gustan los zapatos negros. I like the black shoes. There's more than one pair of shoes here. Zapatos negros. It's plural. So we have to use me gustan instead of me gusta. And then sending here, me gustan el otoño y la primavera. I like the fall and the spring. In this case, fall and spring are plural. There's multiple seasons there. So me gustan instead of me gusta. Okay? And I said this already, but you also use gustar with an infinitive. So when you're saying I like to swim, I like to draw, I like to eat, you're going to use gustar um, because it's an infinitive. So me gusta nadar. Me gusta esquiar. Um, always use the singular form, gusta with singular nouns and infinitives, and always use the plural form, gustan, with plural nouns, okay? Um, a lot of times people think about this in English, oh my gosh, I like jeans, or he likes fall, or whatever, and um, we don't want to put the article in there, we want to say, le gusta otoño, but we need to say, le gusta el otoño, or le gustan los blujines, you can't just say, le gustan blujines, you have to include the article with gusta. You're using it with a noun. Um, okay, occasionally, particularly with that third person form where you have le gusta or le gustan, when you say le gusta, um, since it falls here in this bottom left box, you don't know when you see le gusta or le gustan by itself if it's saying he likes, she likes, or you formal like. Same thing with les gusta. You don't know if it's saying they like or you all like. 
you don't really know unless you look at the context of the sentence. So occasionally we'll use a clarifying statement with a personal a ah to explain who it's talking about. Because in this sentence here, if I just said le gusta el invierno, he likes winter. Well, who likes winter? He likes winter, she likes winter, you formal like winter, we don't know, right? You need to be more specific. So we say, a mi hermano le gusta el invierno. To my brother, winter is pleasing, or he likes winter. Now we've clarified that we're talking about my brother, and we know that he likes winter. Same thing up here. If I just said, le gustan los pantalones cómodos, um, he or she likes comfy pants. Well, who likes those comfy pants? We don't know. So clarifying that a Mario le gustan los pantalones cómodos helps us to clarify to whom that is happening. A couple of things. You can also incorporate the words mucho, poco, or para nada into your gustar expressions. Mucho means a lot. So me gusta mucho el color rojo. I like the color red a lot. Uh, poco means a little, so a Alba le gustan un poco sandalias. She likes a few shoes or sandals, just a, a little bit. And um, para nada means not at all. I use this a lot in natural speech in Spanish. No nos gusta el frío para nada. We don't like the cold at all. Para nada. Um, okay, I want you all to practice with this a little bit. Um, so it gives you some sentences here. This combines your vocabulary along with. Um, some of these gustar words. So for example, in number one, you see en el restaurante me gustan. Now we see gustan here, so we know we have to use this with a plural noun, okay? So we can automatically cross out like a, because la clase de inglés is a singular noun. It's one class, clase. So cross that out. En el restaurante me gustan, it should be los menús variados, letter B. Los menús variados, I like varied menus. Number two, en el restaurante, no me gusta, in the restaurant, I do not like blank. You get to fill in the appropriate answer here. So, en el restaurante, no me gusta, I want you to pause your audio and give these a try. All right, now that you've got a second to try these, let's take a look. Number two, en el restaurante, no me gusta, I do not like el servicio mal. I don't like bad service in the restaurant, el servicio mal. Malo. Uh, number three, en la universidad, me gusta. So at the university, I like blank. And the best answer here is la clase de inglés. We use the gusta, so it's with a singular noun or an infinitive. And la clase de inglés falls into that category, makes sense. Number four, en la universidad, no me gustan. So at the university, I do not like. And um, we used gustan here, so we have to use this with a plural noun. And the best option here was los exámenes difíciles, difficult exams. Number five, en casa me gusta. Uh, at my house, I like blank. And letter C made the most sense here, using it with either an infinitive or a singular noun, in this case, an infinitive. Me gusta ayudar a mis hijos con su tarea. Then number six, en casa no me gustan. Notice here, gustan, so plural noun has to be used. No me gustan las tareas domésticas. I don't like household chores. Las tareas domésticas. Okay. So, in that option, you were able to choose and match them up. Here, it's going to get a little harder. We're going to give you a conversation, and I want you to go through and fill these in with either me or te and gusta or gustan. So, for example, here at the beginning, Elena, Elena is talking to Sonia. And Elena says, Sonia! Blank de blank comprar zapatos? Do you like to buy shoes? So do you like, I'm going to use te because I'm asking to or for you. I'm asking, not asking do you like shoes. I'm asking do you like to buy shoes. So it should be te gusta comprar zapatos. Um, and we used gusta because it was used with an infinitive, a word that ends in A-R-E-R-I-R. -R -R. Sonia replies and says, si, sí, me gusta mucho comprar zapatos. She used me, uh, me here, because she's saying that I like, me gusta mucho. And again, it was still comprar, still used with an infinitive. Okay, I want you to pause your audio and please give the rest of their conversation a try uh, and see how you do here. All right, let's take a look. So Elena is asking a question and she says, do you like tennis shoes? There's uh, multiple shoes here. Los tenis is a plural noun. So I know I'm going to use gustan. And she's asking, do you like, so, te gustan. Do you like tennis shoes? Te gustan los tenis. 
Sonia says, no, I do not, I, I do not like those. I like sandals more. No, me gustan más las sandalias. Again, sandalias was a plural noun. There was more than one sandal there. So we used gustan in order to make it agree. So me gustan más las sandalias. So we look here at our second conversation between Hugo and Raúl. Hugo asks, ¿Te gusta esquiar, Raúl? He's asking, do you like to ski? Esquiar in this case was an infinitive, so we could use gusta. So, ¿Te gusta esquiar, Raúl? Raúl says, no, no para nada. He doesn't like to do it at all, but he says he doesn't like the cold. No me gusta el frío. In this case, el frío was a singular noun, so we needed to use gusta instead of gustan. Same thing down here. Hugo asks, do you like to practice sports in the summer? ¿Te gusta practicar deportes en el verano? Practicar is an infinitive, so therefore we're going to use the singular form of gusta here. ¿Te gusta practicar deportes en el verano? And Raúl says, sí, me gusta el golf y el tenis. Yes, I like golf and tennis. And technically there's two sports here, golf and tennis, so he should use gustan in order to make it agree, because there's more than one. Okay, our next grammatical structure that you're going to see in this chapter are your ER and IR verbs. Now, you learned about AR verbs back in chapter two, and you spent some time with those, so I just want to give you a throwback real fast. You remember with an AR verb, you chop off your AR, carry down what's left over, in this case, hobble, H-A-B-L, you're gonna hobble on down, and then you add your appropriate endings for the AR verb. So you have O, AS, a, amos, ice, and an. That's how you conjugated an AR verb. With an ER or an IR verb, the process is very similar. Look at the verb comer. You're going to chop off the ER and comer, carry down the COM all the way down in all your boxes, and then add your appropriate ER endings, which in this case, instead of O, as, a, amos, ice, an, you have O, ace, a, amos, ace, in. Very similar. You're basically just changing all the A's to E's. O, es, e, amos, es, in. Similarly, an IR verb is basically the same thing. You're going to chop off your IR, carry down what's left, in this case, escribe. Carry that all the way down in all your boxes. And then add these endings. O, es, e, amos, es, in. You'll notice that the IR verb endings are almost identical to the ER ones. O, S, A, and N are all the same. But for an IR verb, instead of amos and ace, we have emos and is. So the nosotros and the vosotros are slightly different. Not horrible there. These are some common ER and IR verbs that you're going to see and just other verbs that are in your chapter. But abrir, to open. Beber, to drink. Comer, to eat. Correr, to run. Comprender, to understand. Decidir, to decide. Leer, to read. Vender, to sell. These are all very common ER and IR verbs. Uh, I do want to take a moment just to remind you um, that when you're making a negative sentence, when you're trying to say that someone doesn't like blah, 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 you put a no in front of the conjugated verb. This is a common mistake in Spanish. That's why I'm pointing it out. Sometimes people, like this sentence, for example, says, Los niños no comprenden inglés. The children don't understand English. Um, people write this in weird ways, and they try to say, Los niños comprenden no inglés. Um, the no always comes directly before your conjugated verb. So since comprenden is my conjugated verb from comprender, I would find no in front of that. Just like with our AR verbs, I also want you to remember um, you cannot have two conjugated verbs side by side in the same sentence. Okay, so uh, we did this with our AR verbs before in chapter two. Uh, you see here, debemos estudiar en la biblioteca. We should study in the library. Or we ought to study in the library. Um, debemos is already conjugated, so estudiar does not need to be. Okay, be very careful there. Um, and then to form a question in Spanish, you just in, invert the subject and the verb. So take a basic sentence, Alfredo vive in Bogota. He lives in Bogota. And change it around. Instead of saying Alfredo vive, ask, vive Alfredo in Bogota? Switch the words. When you do that and you put the verb in front of the subject, you're forming a question. When the subject is in front of the verb, you're forming a statement. So be careful with those. 
let's practice a little bit here. I want you to uh, select the verb that makes the most sense here in the sentence, the one that is the most logical, and um, it must be conjugated correctly, of course, as well. So, in number one, it says, Cuando tengo hambre, when I'm hungry, blank un sandwich. And your options are como, I eat, creo, I think, or corro, I run. Well, I generally eat a sandwich when I'm hungry. Como un sandwich. Uh, look at one more. Number two, Vanessa y Nelson tienen prisa. Y blank a clase. So Vanessa and Nelson are in a hurry and they blank the class. They comprenden, understand, escriben, write, or corren, run. I think the best answer here is that they corren, they run to class, corren a clase. I'd like for you to take a moment now and go ahead and pause your audio and give the rest of these a try. All right, now that you've got a second to try these, number three says, Cuando tienen calor, mis padres blank las ventanas. So when they're hot, my parents blank the windows, and your options are deciden, to decide, asisten a, to attend, or abren, they open. Your best option here was abren, they open the windows. Number four, Belinda y yo tenemos éxito en la clase de cálculo y blank buenas notas. So Belinda and I have success in calculus class and we blank good grades. We uh, sell good grades, we receive good grades, or we learn good grades. Our best option here would be that we receive, recibimos buenas notas. And finally, when Leopoldo tiene sed, blank agua. When Leopoldo is thirsty, he blanks water. Our best option here would be that he drinks water, bebe agua. All right, hopefully you're feeling pretty okay about your vocabulary here. Um, I want to make sure that you know how to conjugate these ER and IR verbs. So I'm going to give you another little activity. Uh, this is called Mis Amigos y Yo, and it gives you a sentence uh, that you need to fill in with the correct conjugated verb. So, for example, number one says that Mi amigo Gustavo y yo blank muchos libros. So my friend Gustavo and I blank a lot of books. Um, our verb here is in bold in parentheses. We're trying to say that we read a lot of books. So we took the ER off of leer and created lemos. We read. It says that I blank novelas de ciencia ficción. So I read science fiction novels. In this case, you want to take your verb leer, chop off your ER. You're left with just LE. And in the yo form, you're adding back an O to say that I read science fiction. And on letter C, you're saying that he blanks suspense novels, he reads. We're going to take leer, chop off our ER, and add back an E in the he form to say that he reads suspense novels. Okay, uh, I'd like for you to take a moment, pause your audio, give numbers two and three a try for me, please. All right, now that you've had a second to try these, let's take a look. Number two says, Mi amiga Patricia y yo. Trabajamos en una tienda. My friend Patricia and I work in a store. Y nosotros blank ropa para mujeres. Our verb here is vender, which means to sell. So we're saying that um, my friend Patricia and I work in a store, and we sell clothes for women. So we're going to take the verb vender to say that we sell. We're going to chop off our ER. Remember our ending for an ER verb here in the we form should be EMOS. So to say that we sell, we're going to say nosotros vendemos. We sell ropa para mujeres. I sell dresses. Yo vendo. Take your verb vender, chop off your ER, add back an O. Yo vendo vestidos. Y Patricia vende zapatos. Take vender, chop off your ER, and add back an E. She sells zapatos. Number three. In la clase, la profesora blank su libro. And our, our verb here is abrir, to open. So in class, the professor opens her book. Um, abrir, take off your IR, and add back an E. In clase, la profesora abre su libro. Los estudiantes blank sus libros también. To say that the students open their books also, take abrir, chop off your IR, and add back an EN. Los estudiantes Abren sus libros también. And then finally, a Elena no le gusta estudiar y no desea blank su libro. So Elena does not like to study and she does not desire to read her book. So in this case, or does not desire to open her book, same thing. 
In this case, um, you're leaving it as abrir because desea is already conjugated like we talked about before. So a Elena no le gusta estudiar y no desea abrir su libro. So be careful there. Okay, hopefully uh, you're starting to feel better. We'll do just one more activity with these ER and IR verbs. Here, uh, you get to be a little creative. So it gives you the model sentence that Carla tiene problemas con su novio. And it tells you, uh, you get to create a sentence about what she should do. So the model wrote that ella debe hablar con su novio. She should talk to her boyfriend. Uh, number one tells us that Julio y Claudia tienen malas notas en sus clases. So Julio and Claudia have bad grades in their classes. Well, we're going to say that Julio and Claudia deben, they should. Notice deben is already conjugated. So now when I go up to pick a verb, I don't have to conjugate the verb that's bolded because deben is already conjugated. So Claudia and Julio deben estudiar. They're getting bad grades. Deben estudiar. Number two, it says that a Monica no le gusta su ropa, pero no tiene dinero para comprar ropa nueva. So Monica does not like her clothes, but she doesn't have money in order to buy new clothes. So we're going to say that Monica should blank, and you get to make it up. So think about what you want to say here. I wrote in my sentence that Monica debe buscar ropa barata. She should look for some cheap clothes. Okay. I want you guys to try numbers three and four real quick, just to make sure you understand. Number three says, me gusta el frío, pero vivo en Puerto Rico. I like the cold, but I live in Puerto Rico. So decide what you should do. It says, debo, um, and I wrote in my sentence that, uh, debo viajar a Antarctica. <laughs> I should travel to Antarctica. Or yo debo viajar a un lugar frío. And number four, el señor Ortiz Desea estar más sano. Mr. Ortiz uh, wants to be more healthy. And I wrote that el señor Ortiz debe correr. He should run. Okay, hopefully you're feeling okay about those ER and IR verbs. Next, we're moving on to discuss vocabulary for the second portion of this chapter, which relates to days of the week, the date, um, holidays, that kind of thing. So, uh, these are super important in this chapter and also just for the rest of the course and the rest of your Spanish career. You see days of the week and uh, days of the month a lot, so it's important that you know these. Um, you see your, your months here. We have Enero, January, Febrero, February, Marzo, March, Abril, April. Be careful with this one. This is pronounced as Mayo. You hear about El Cinco de Mayo. It's not El Cinco de Mayo, right? El Cinco de Mayo, Mayo. June is Junio, July, Julio, August, Agosto, September, Septiembre, October, Octubre, November, Noviembre, and December, Diciembre. Those are your months of the year. You also see in this chapter days of the week um, and We'll start with Monday in this case. Monday in Spanish is lunes, Tuesday, martes, Wednesday, miércoles, Thursday, jueves, Friday, viernes, Saturday, sábado, accent on the A there, sábado, and Sunday, domingo, domingo. Okay, notice about these that months of the year are not capitalized. In Spanish. So it's enero with a lowercase e, not a capital E. Same thing with your days of the week. It's lunes with a lowercase l, not a capital L. We don't capitalize days of the week or months of the year in Spanish. Be careful with that. Um, you might want to ask someone the date. So you could say, ¿Cuál es la fecha? Literally, what is the date? Um, you also could ask them what day it is. ¿Qué día es hoy? What day is today? And they could say, Hoy es miércoles, today is Wednesday. Hoy es, today is. Um, one thing to know when we're talking about the date, uh, we sort of have a little formula in Spanish that we use. It's um, el, followed by whatever number, of, followed by whatever month. So for example, um, 
you know, you can say today is um, August 8th. It would be the 8th of August, el 8 de agosto. The 9th of August, el 9 de agosto. The 10th of August, el 10 de agosto. It continues. All those work except for the first. We never say el uno de whatever month. We say for the first, we use the word first, el primero de. Like a lot of times you hear people say, it's August 1 or it's September 1. That's just incorrect English. It should be September 1st. It should be August 1st. So we never say el uno de whatever month. It's el primero de. Okay? Speaking of all these days of the week and months of the year, let's give you a chance to practice with these. So um, in this activity, you're given some type of uh, sequence of words, and you have to pick out what's missing. So for example, here in number one, you see enero, febrero, marzo, blank. So we're going in order. We have January, enero, February, febrero, March, marzo, and we need April, abril. In number two, you have a similar pattern. You have viernes, Friday, sábado, Saturday, and we need Sunday, domingo. Okay, so as you figure out the pattern in these, I'd like for you to take a moment, fill in these that you're missing, okay, and we'll go over them in just one second. You can unpause when you're ready. Okay, let's take a look. So number three says lunes, Monday, miércoles, Wednesday. Oh, and we've skipped something here. We skipped Tuesday in between, so we're doing every other day. It's like class days. Monday, Wednesday, good Friday. Should be viernes, viernes. Number four, uh, we're going in order here. Um, septiembre, octubre, September, October. Now we need noviembre, November. Sending in number five, we're going in order. Lunes, Monday. Martes, Tuesday, we need Wednesday, miércoles. Number six, we have junio, June, julio, July, and we need August, agosto, agosto. Number seven, we have jueves, Thursday, sábado, Saturday. We're skipping a day, so we skipped Friday, we're going to skip Sunday and go on to Monday, so we should have Thursday, Saturday, Monday, jueves, sábado, lunes. And then number eight, mayo, agosto, noviembre, we're skipping quite a bit here, we went from May, we skipped June and July, we went to agosto, we skipped um, August, September, October, now we're in November, we're skipping January, February, so we need March, marzo. No, I'm sorry, we're skipping, I said that wrong. We're skipping two, so May, we skipped June and July, we had August, uh, we skipped September, October, we have November, and then we're skipping December and January, and we're going to February, febrero. Some of these you have to really think about, <laughs> febrero. Okay, so just be careful with those. Um, those are your days of the week, your months of the year. I think studying those and using your flashcards, you'll get those down pretty easily. That's mostly just vocabulary. Um, where things get a little bit harder is when we talk about Spanish time. This is a little challenging for some people. So to ask what time is it in Spanish, we ask, ¿Qué hora es? Literally, what hour is it? So uh, you hold up your watch and say, ¿Qué hora es? What hour is it? Or we're asking, what time is it? Um, if you want to say that it is a certain time, for all times other than 1 o'clock, you're going to use son las and the number. So, for example, here I have son las tres. It's three o'clock. That works for all times except one o'clock. So I could say son las cinco. It's five o'clock. Son las cuatro. It's four o'clock. Son las nueve. It's nine o'clock. Um, and that's explaining son las, right? Everything except one o'clock uses son las to say it is whatever time. Now, when you do have one o'clock, instead of saying son las, we say es la. And for one, it's una. If you're wondering why it's like this, remember we're asking what's the hour, what hour is it? So literally, when you say son las tres, you're saying it's, it's there's three hours that have passed, son las tres. Whereas one o'clock is only one hour, it's singular, it's la hora. So we say es la una, it's one. That can be very uh, tricky for a lot of people. So es la una, it's one o'clock. Be very careful there. Um, you may want to add a little bit to the times. Um, so, for example, if it was 3.05, we would say it's 3 and 5. Son las tres. We're going to use E for and, and then 5, cinco. Son las tres y cinco. If I want to say it's 3.10 or 10 minutes after 3, I'm going to say son las tres y diez. It's 10 
or sorry, it's three and 10 minutes. Son las tres y diez. Um, when you have 15 or 30, things are a little different. Uh, you may have heard your grandpa say, it's it's a quarter after, or it's a quarter till. Uh, a quarter, obviously 25% of an hour is 15 minutes. So we're saying here, um, y cuarto would be a quarter after or 15 after. So if you want to say it's 315 or a quarter after three, an old person might say, you would say son las tres y cuarto. Las tres y cuarto. Um, same thing with 30, like I would say it's 3.30 or it's 5.30, but my grandpa would tell you that it's half past three. Son las tres y media. Y media literally means half past. Y media. Okay, um, in some countries as well, instead of hearing a quarter or half past, you hear y quince, so literally son las tres y quince, it's three and fifteen. Or son las tres y treinta, it's three and thirty minutes. Both of those are correct. You can do either one. This is the more correct way to do it. Y cuarto y media. Um, something to note about Spanish time that's a little weird. If it is um, up until the 30-minute mark, you're going to use and. So it's 3 and 5 minutes. It's 3 and 10 minutes. It's 3 and 15 minutes. It's 3.29. It's 3.30. You're using and. Tres y blah, blah, blah. Tres y blah, blah, blah. But if it's after the 30 minute mark, like if it's um, 3.40, we do it a little bit backwards. So instead of saying it's 3 and 40 minutes, son las 3 y 40, we go the other way. We're going to say it's 4 o'clock minus 20 minutes. So uh, look at 10.45 here as the example. I could say son las 10 y 45. It's 10 and 45. And that's correct. That's not wrong. But if you notice, it kind of takes a little more work to do it that way, right? you got to write a lot. Um, you can switch it around. Instead of saying it's 10 and 45, you could say it's 11 o'clock minus 15 minutes. So we've said son las 11 menos 15. It's 11 minus 15 minutes. You could also say it's a quarter till 11. Son las 11 menos cuarto. It's 11 minus a quarter. Both of these work for your time. It's really a personal preference thing as to which one you prefer. Um, and we will practice these in just a minute. Some other expressions that you need to know. Um, you know how to say it's two o'clock. Remember, for everything other than one, we use son las. So it's two o'clock, son las dos. Um, but you might want to specify that it's two o'clock in the morning or it's two o'clock in the afternoon. So in the morning, the equivalent of a.m. in Spanish is de la mañana, literally of the morning or in the morning, de la mañana. The equivalent of p.m. for in the afternoon or at night is de la tarde of the afternoon or de la tarde or de la noche of the evening. So de la mañana, de la tarde, and de la noche for your a.m. and p.m. Um, you also here have some other expressions on the dot in punto. So son las dos y in punto. It's two o'clock on the dot. Um, for it's midday, it's noon, you could say, es mediodía, es mediodía, it's uh, noon, midday, or literally the middle of the night or midnight is medianoche, so es medianoche. Um, so just remember what we talked about here. For it is, when you're talking about a time, you're going to use son las, if it's anything other than one o'clock. If it is one o'clock, you're going to say es la una. If you want to say something happens at a certain time, like I have class at whatever time, for anything other than one o'clock, we use a las, again, because you have multiple hours, and for one o'clock, we use a la una. So, um, tengo clase a las dos, I have class at two, or tengo clase a la una y media, at 1.30. All right, I'm going to give you some times here on an old school clock, and I want you to tell me what time it is. We'll do these together, okay? So here as you look at the clock, you can see that it's 10 o'clock. Uh, so for anything other than one, we use son las, and 10 in Spanish is diez. So we would say son las diez. And the next one, you can see it's five o'clock. Again, for anything other than one o'clock, to say it is, we're going to say son las. For five, cinco. So son las cinco. It's five o'clock. Here in this example, uh, you can see it's pointing, uh, it's five and 10 minutes after five. So we're going to say it's five 
starting with son las, because it's not one o'clock, son las, five, cinco, and ten minutes after. Son las cinco y diez. It's five and ten after five. Son las cinco y diez. And then same thing here. You can see that it is, um, looks like 8, 15 here. So uh, 15 minutes after 8, there's multiple answers. You could say son las ocho, where it's 8. And then the ending, you could say y cuarto, it's 15 minutes after or a quarter after. That's the most correct answer. But it would not be wrong to say son las ocho y quince as well. All right, here you see some mobile phones with times. We're doing the same thing here. In number one, it's 318. So we're going to say son las tres, it's three and 18 minutes, y diez y ocho. And remember, a lot of times you see it written like this, it's one word, y diez y ocho. Okay, uh, number two, the, the phone shows that it's 630. So we're going to say son las seis y media. It's six and 30, half past six. Or you could say son las seis y treinta. Both are correct. Okay, I want you to pause your audio now, and I want you to look at numbers three through six, where you're given cell phones with times, and I want you to go and select, um, go, go through and write these sentences telling me what time it is in Spanish based on the time you see on the phone, okay? You can unpause when you're ready. Okay, amigos, let's take a look. So number three, it's 1.27. Aha, this time it is one o'clock. So we're going to start with Esla. Esla una, it's one. And it's 127, es la una y 27. Again, sometimes written as 27. All right. Uh, number four tells us it's 1210. So it's any time other than one o'clock. We're going to start with son las. 12 in Spanish is 12, son las 12. And 10 minutes after, son las 12 y 10. Number five, it's 1150. So we could do it two ways here. We could say it's 11 and 50. Well, remember, if it's anything after the 30-minute mark, it's better to go backwards. So instead of saying 11 and 50, let's say it's 12 minus 10. So we're going to say it's 12, son las 12, minus, menos, and 10 minutes, diez. And number six, 745. Uh, so again, we could say son las 7 y 45. It's 7 and 40 and 5. Or we could back it up the other way, which is preferable, and say that it's 8 o'clock minus 15 minutes. Son las ocho menos cuarto, 8 minus a quarter, or son las ocho menos quince. Either one is perfectly correct. Hopefully you're feeling okay with time in Spanish. It is sort of a challenging um, thing since we don't really do this as much in English. So sort of challenging um, to think about the way the numbers work. Okay. The third grammar structure that you see as a part of chapter three is the verb ir, which means to go in Spanish. Um, be careful, this is a verb. Ir means to go. It is not one of your infinitive endings like ar, er, ir. This is not the ir ending. This is its own verb, ir. Um, ir means to go. And as you conjugate ir, you end up with voy, I go, vas, you go, va, he or she goes, vamos, we go, vais, you all in Spain go, and van, they go. I always tell my students, do you remember? They go in a van, they go in a van, they go in a van, man. van, they go. All right. Um, if you look at your sentences here, you see, voy a comer mucho. I am going to eat a lot. You can combine that conjugated form of ir with an infinitive. Um, we do this because, remember, you can't have two conjugated verbs in the same sentence in Spanish. So, voy a comer mucho. I am going to eat a lot. Voy a beber cinco tazas de café hoy. I am going to drink five cups of coffee today. That's why I've only had three. Uh, voy a ir a la biblioteca para estudiar. I'm going to go to the library to study. So, again, all of these are used with an infinitive. All right, as we keep going, um, there is another word here. Uh, you, you already know donde, which is where. When you're asking to where is someone going, you, you add an a in front of donde, the preposition a. Uh, this is weird for us, I guess, because in English we say, where are you going? You know, where are you going? 
But um, that's actually incorrect English. We should ask, to where are you going? Uh, because it's incorrect to end a sentence in a preposition in English. So same thing, to where are you going? That's literally what this means. When you put the a in front of donde, instead of where, you get to where. So in our first question here, you see, ¿A dónde van ustedes después de las clases hoy? So where are you going today after class? Um, ¿A dónde van? Where are you all going? ¿A dónde van? Uh, my Spanish teacher in high school would always yell at us and say, ¿A dónde vas? Where are you going? Anytime you get out of your seat, ¿A dónde vas? ¿A dónde vas? Where are you going? Uh, so it's it's helpful to have that, ¿A dónde? To where? And then you probably answer and say, Vamos a blah, blah, blah. We're going to the library. Vamos a la biblioteca. Notice here, people get confused on questions like this in MindTap. Notice in the question we're asking, to where are you all going? So if I were answering that, if people, if someone were looking at me saying, hey, where are you guys going? I would answer and I wouldn't just say I'm going. I would say we are going, talking about our group, because we ask where are you all going? So we answered with we're going. Vamos a la biblioteca. So pay attention to that register. Um, okay, you learned about contractions back in chapter two, I believe, um, where you had, yes, right here, chapter two, where you had de and el that became del. In this chapter, you have another contraction, and that is where a and el becomes al. Again, same reason. You have two vowels side by side. It starts to create word vomit in there, so a and el becomes al. The a does not contract with other articles, so you can still say a la. A los or a las, you just can't say a el, it becomes al. An example here, los sábados yo voy al estadio con mis amigos. Saturdays I go to the stadium with my friends. Or al media, mediodía, mis amigos van a la cafetería. So at, at noon, my friends go to the cafeteria. So notice here, a and el became al, whereas a and la just stayed normal. Okay. Some common ir expressions you're going to see. Um, you have ir de compras, to go shopping or literally to go buying. Ir de excursión, to go hiking. Ir de paseo, to go for a walk. Or ir de vacaciones, to go on vacation. So, if I wanted to say, I'm going hiking um, at Bay's Mountain, I could say, Voy de excursión en las montañas de Bays. Um, so in this case, ir de excursión to go on an excursion or to go hiking was revised. Ir was conjugated to voy in this case. All right, I'm going to give you all a little bit of practice here. We're going to bring back those countries and capitals that you learned back in Spanish 1. So number one says, yo voy a San Juan. And you have to know that San Juan in this case is the capital of Puerto Rico. So instead of saying I'm going to San Juan, I'm going to say I'm going to Puerto Rico. Yo voy a Puerto Rico. In the model here, uh, it said Adriana va a Santiago. And we would say Adriana va a Chile, since Santiago is the capital city of Chile. Okay, so I'm going to ask you here. Manuela va a Buenos Aires. ¿A dónde va Manuela? Sí, Manuela va a Argentina. Argentina. Número tres. Jorge y Horacio van a San José. ¿A dónde van Jorge y Horacio? Jorge y Horacio van a Costa Rica. Número cuatro. Mariana y yo vamos a Santo Domingo. ¿A dónde vamos? Vamos a la República Dominicana. Número 5. La familia Montalvo va a Lima. ¿A dónde va la familia Montalvo? Pues la familia Montalvo va a Perú. A Perú. Número 6. Los hermanos Castro van a Madrid. ¿A dónde van los hermanos Castro? Los hermanos Castro van a España. Ok. Y finalmente... Finally, in this last little activity here, you are going to be using uh, a form of the verb ir, and I actually stole this from your, your book. Um, you have an activity like this on your test too, which is why I wanted to bring it up, but uh, I'm gonna give you on your test a picture like this, uh, and you're gonna have to tell me using the verb ir where you're going. So it gives you the subject, yo, 
and it gives you a picture here at the gym here. So to say, I'm going to the gym, people want to say, yo voy a el gimnasio, and they write that on their test, but that's not totally right, correct? Because a and el becomes al. Don't forget that contraction. Over here, you see el profesor Rosales, and it looks like uh, he's going to the laboratory or the science class, maybe. So el profesor Rosales va a, he is going to, and then in this case, la clase de ciencias, or al laboratorio, if you do the al thing. Okay. Hopefully you're feeling better about these things, guys. In this chapter, you have learned how to identify vocabulary related to weather, seasons, and clothing. You learned how to communicate dates and times in Spanish. You have learned how to express likes and dislikes using the verb gustar. And you learned how to tell what you and others are going to do in the near future using the verb ir plus an infinitive. As always, guys, please don't hesitate to contact me with any questions you have. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care.